Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Courtney Lane and I am asexual. No, this isn't really a coming out video because it's not really a secret. I've made social media posts about asexuality and I've been interviewed for articles and podcasts about my life as an asexual woman, although this is the first time I'm addressing it here on my channel. But Courtney, I hear you ask, isn't your channel supposed to be about Victorian hair jewelry and other unusual hair history? Why on earth are you making a video about asexuality? Well, it's very simple. As the host of this channel, I share a lot about my own personal work and experience. So if you're going to know me, then I think this is an important part of my life that's worth knowing about, especially considering that it is almost Asexual Awareness Week. Are you aware of asexuals? Because now is the time to heighten your asexual senses. Be aware. Be very aware. So if asexuality is something you've never heard of, or if it's a subject that you have limited information on, then I encourage you to stick with me today and learn more about it. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell to support an asexual artist and small business owner. I think my straw got in that shot. Whoopsie. I'm drinking. <laughs> iced coffee out of an extraordinarily long straw. You see, it is difficult for me to raise and set down glasses regularly today, so accessibility, am I right? Since this is a one-off video instead of a whole series, this is probably going to be a long one. So I'll also put some time markers down in the description in case you wanna jump around to the topics you're less familiar with. Alrighty then, first, why don't we go ahead and define what asexuality is and is not, and then we'll get into the various nuances and some of my own personal experience. Defining asexuality. Asexuality is an orientation and a segment within the greater LGBTQIA community. In fact, one of the prominent uses for the A in that alphabet is in fact asexual. But what does that mean? Simply put, a person who is asexual does not experience sexual attraction. Let me say that again. A person who is asexual does not experience sexual attraction. This is the most widely accepted blanket definition for what asexuality is. However, much like all other sexualities and orientations, asexuality is a spectrum. So keep in mind as we go forward that Everybody is unique and two different people identifying as asexual could very easily have vastly different experiences. Despite this short, sweet, and to the point definition, there is still widespread misinformation, confusion, and ignorance about asexuality. This ignorance can be rampant, sometimes even within certain LGBT spaces. So let's break down the most common and harmful stereotypes, shall we? Breaking down stereotypes. There are several persistent myths about asexuals that stem from misunderstanding at best and malicious intent at worst. One of those being that asexual people are celibate, either voluntarily so, or <clears throat> involuntarily. This is a harmful misconception that I would like to squash right here and now. Asexuality is an orientation, whereas celibacy is a willful choice to abstain from sex, usually for religious reasons. So hopefully you can see how it would be harmful to conflate an orientation with a lifestyle choice. After all, you wouldn't say someone chooses to be gay, so therefore you should not say that an asexual person is just celibate. And let's all just agree to keep the word asexual as far away from the incel community as possible. Gay thanks. 
Harmful misconception number two is that asexuals reproduce by budding. Can you reproduce by budding? Can you? Can you? No, we do not. And I'll admit, I strongly doubt that anyone who says this actually believes that asexual people reproduce asexually, but that certainly doesn't stop a tremendous number of ignorant smartasses from asking us if we do. So please, don't do this. Harmful misconception number three is that asexual people just haven't met the right person yet, or in the cases of teenagers and young adults, that they're late bloomers. If you want to take me as one small example, I have been very happily married for over six years now, so I don't think it's an issue of not finding the right person. And again, to try to compare this to other more well-known sexualities, you wouldn't, or at the very least shouldn't, tell a gay teenager that she just hasn't found the right guy yet, or that they'll grow out of it. So just like any orientation, it's not appropriate to tell someone that how they identify is wrong or just a passing phase. Trust that people know themselves and start treating asexuality as the valid orientation that it is. And perhaps the most harmful misconception of them all is that asexual people have something mentally, emotionally, or physically wrong with them. Let me be absolutely clear. Asexuality is not a disorder. There is nothing wrong with us that makes us this way. It's also not something that should be viewed as sad or pitiful. Asexual people can live perfectly happy and fulfilling lives without feeling like they're missing something. And no, asexuality does not just stem from some prudish Victorian era ideals, no matter how on brand that would actually be for me. So now that we know some of the most prominent misconceptions, let's analyze how these came to be, or at the very least, how they came to be amplified. Asexuality in the media. Traditionally, asexuality has not been treated very kindly in the media. Recently, there have been some positive developments on this front, and we'll get into that more later, but for now let's take a look at what is perhaps the worst portrayal of asexuality possible, and was also, drumroll, my very first exposure to the term asexual as it applies to the orientation. Wah, wah. So at first it started wonderfully. Could be a bladder infection. We'll run a pregnancy test. Oh, I'm not pregnant. Any type of birth control can fail. Not mine. Oh, I'm sorry. You said you were married. Yeah, happily. It's okay. It's, sex can wane in any marriage over time. No, no. We've never had sex. Oh, we, we kiss and cuddle, but neither one of us is interested in sex. You're both celibate. No, neither of us. Celibacy is a choice. This is our orientation. We're asexual. Not quite sure what box to check here. As one who felt this way but didn't have the language yet to explain it to another, this was a revelation. I was shouting at the screen going, yes, that's me, I understand now. And to boot, I'd also been forced by doctors to take unnecessary pregnancy tests because they didn't believe me. So for the first time, I felt very, very seen. But if you're going to attempt to present asexuality to the general public on a major network television show, perhaps the one about a jaded doctor with no faith in humanity who always solves the obscure medical case is not the right way <laughs> because it wasn't long before this happened. You know that close to 1% of the population identifies as asexual? 
You really gotta get you laid. I have to plow that furrow myself, so be it. I have a patient who's asexual. Is she a giant pool of algae? It's a valid sexual orientation, according to this article, at least. Yeah, I think I read that too. Is that Fugliness Weekly? She's perfectly fine looking. Happily married for ten years. A guy who loves penis enough for both of them. He's asexual too. Ran a complete physical order. Nothing wrong except a common bladder infection. Hundred bucks says I can find a medical reason why she doesn't want to have sex. So we had not human, too ugly to get some, and closeted gay almost in the same breath from House. The asexual discrimination trifecta, if you will. Oh no, there goes my straw. I was mad. But I was also so ready to see House get put in his place on this one. After all, those crass comments are realistic. I personally get them all the time, but they would only be justified if he was proven wrong in the show. After placing a bet, House tries to find what's wrong with her. In the lab, such speculations as imbalanced hormones, spinal cord injury blocking genital signals, and childhood abuse are all floated. But when they can find evidence of none of these, House says this. Lots of people don't have sex. The only people who don't want it are either sick, dead, or lying. And I can tell you from personal experience that there are far too many doctors who actually feel this way. So with no obvious medical reason for the wife being this way, the answer is that she must be lying. So the medical focus then shifts to her husband. She's lying to compensate. The tale as old as time. Boy meets girl, girl falls for boy, boy says, I'm asexual. The girl says, yeah, me too. Under wildly unscrupulous circumstances, House tricks the husband into undergoing medical tests, only to find that he does, in fact, have a tumor near his pituitary gland that is lowering his libido and causing erectile dysfunction. Medical brushing off of asexuality aside, it's also dangerous to conflate asexuality with low libido because the two are not synonymous. Upon revealing to the couple that the man has a brain tumor, he justifiably has an identity crisis to the point of wanting to refuse treatment. He selflessly thinks of his wife and how he can't put her through a sudden desire for sex when she says... It's actually pretty fun. From what I remember. But you said that... I know. I know. I wanted to spend my life with you. And I knew that meant making certain sacrifices. But a girl has needs. Because of course she was lying! We'll circle back to the reason why it's also, on top of everything else, harmful to assume that an asexual cannot have sex if they're in a relationship, but I do just want to mention first how especially hurtful this was to see in an episode of House for me personally. As some of you may already be aware, I suffer from a rare genetic disorder called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome along with several other comorbidities. That's actually the reason why I'm wearing not one, but two elbow braces today, and I often walk with the aid of a cane. When House was still on TV, I would fantasize about having a doctor as dedicated to solving the mystery as House. I always told myself that it didn't matter if my doctor lacked all empathy and bedside manner just as long as I would get the answers and treatment for medical symptoms that plagued me my entire life going completely undiagnosed. 
I will add as an aside that I do have really strong feelings about the intersection of asexuality and disability that don't usually get addressed in the broader asexuality conversation, and I don't want to get too far into it in this video, but please do leave me a comment if you're interested in future information on the topic. My channel will remain largely about hair and history, but I'm not opposed to throwing in the occasional video about other topics I'm passionate about if you all are interested. But I digress. Going back to the episode of House, he wins his bet and says this. Come on. You saved a man's life. Course corrected two people's wildly screwed up worldviews. Is that bad for a day's work? wildly screwed up worldviews. And to add insult to injury, he lights the $100 bill on fire and uses it to light a victory cigar, and thus ends the asexuality plotline in House. No, I'm not saying that House is the only problem. There have certainly been other instances of poor asexuality representation, but something like 9 million people watched that episode back in 2012 when it first aired, and that's not even counting everyone who's watched it since as a rerun or on a streaming site. This was, for me, as well as many others, the very first introduction to asexuality as an orientation. So no, House is not the only problem, but it was the first major step in the wrong direction toward proper representation. Thankfully, though, in recent years, a shift in the media toward better representation for the asexual community has begun. While House was perhaps the worst depiction I've ever seen, the best depiction I've ever seen is by far and away Bojack Horseman. Before we even get into any of the details, the single greatest thing Bojack Horseman did was give a major character a full storyline about their asexuality that spans several seasons. This was not just one throwaway detail or a single episode. In fact, at the end of season three, Already crowd favorite character Todd Chavez has a conversation with his would-be girlfriend Emily that sets everything into motion. Todd, can I ask you something? Of course. What's your deal? I feel like you like me, but you don't like me, but you like me and I don't know what that is. Are you gay? Whoa, why would you even- You can tell me if you're gay, it's fine. This isn't the 1600s or some places in the present. I'm not gay. I mean... I don't think I am, but I don't think I'm straight either. I don't know what I am. I think I might be nothing. Note how at first they did not actually say the word asexual. This is clearly a guy who's questioning his own identity, but my asexual spouse and I were ex because we were pretty sure we knew where that was going. So I shouted about my excitement to every BoJack fan who would listen while we had to wait over a year for the next season to arrive. And let me tell you, it did not disappoint. The very first episode of season four dropped the A word. And yes, it is important to say the word itself because with such little representation in the media, the asexual community often resorts to developing their own headcanons for what unlabeled characters in media might be asexual based solely on not having any sexual interests that we're aware of. With all of the care and nuance that proper character development deserves, it was actually an uncomfortable conversation for Todd in the beginning. Todd, you're great. What a way to end a sentence. But I want a boyfriend who isn't asexual. Whoa, what, why did you call me that? No, 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 it's not bad. I didn't mean it well, negatively. I was just like stating know, I'm, it. I'm not, and... that word doesn't necessarily describe. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Whatever you call yourself, you're my friend and I support you. But sometimes labels can be helpful. Wow, well, I would label this conversation rough. 
But after some questioning, soul searching, even going so far as to wonder if he's allowed to be in love, he finally embraces the title and visits an asexual meetup. Now, having a community with which to sort out his feelings and ask questions, he learns more about the diversity within the asexual spectrum and ultimately becomes more comfortable with his own identity. It's a beautiful and relatable narrative, and it only gets better from there. I'm not going to spoil the ending of Todd's plotline as an asexual human being because, honestly, do yourself a favor and watch it for yourself if you haven't already, but I do want to touch on Todd's axolotl girlfriend. An asexual axolotl named Yolanda asks him out and things seem to be going fine until it's time for him to meet her family. Listen, I haven't told my family I'm asexual, so it might be best if for tonight we just pretend we're sexually active. I mean, it's a family dinner. What are the odds we're going to ask questions about our sexuality, right? Right. On the surface, this seemingly shouldn't be an issue. However, it turns out that everyone in Yolanda's family is hypersexual and somehow employed within the sex industry. This episode is ludicrous and plays out like an absolute farce as Todd and Yolanda try to fit in with her family without letting on that they are not sexual themselves. Now, the farcical nature of this episode, of course, means that everything is grossly exaggerated, but that actually led many non-asexual people to think that it couldn't possibly be based on a real asexual situation that might happen, but as an asexual, I can tell you with certainty that prior to coming out, there are a shocking number of un comfortable conversations or circumstances that one could find themselves in that do make this episode surprisingly relatable. Asexuality is still a widely unknown orientation, so people who have never been exposed to the concept might initially feel as though they're broken or weird or alone because we just live in a very sex-obsessed society from movies to TV shows, books, music videos, it's easy to fall into the trap of believing that you're the only one in the world who doesn't feel this sexual attraction. So that's why asexual representation matters so much. And sure, there are educational resources and communities online, but it's far easier for people to find those resources if they first have the proper language with which to search for them. Ace culture. Why, of course we have our own culture. For starters, we call ourselves ace or aces, often using the ace of spades in asexual imagery. The opposite of ace is aloe. Someone who is not sexually attracted to anyone is asexual, and someone who is sexually attracted to someone is allosexual. So you will often see people shorten these words to ace and aloe in conversation. This is what our pride flag looks like, and as perhaps you may have guessed by Todd's anthropomorphic girlfriend and my choice of outfit today, many in the ace community have adopted the axolotl as our mascot. But if there is one word to sum up ace culture, it's cake! Because cake is better than sex. Also, garlic bread is better than sex. Really, anything remotely pleasant and enjoyable is better than sex. Also, dragons? are kind of a thing now? <laughs> I don't really know why. I don't think anyone really knows why, but I honestly think someone one day just said, hey, dragons are awesome. And someone else said, yeah, dragons are awesome. And someone in the corner said, wait, are dragons an asexual thing? And everyone said, sure, I guess so. 
I am not included in this one, but many aces as an outward sign of pride in everyday fashion wear a black ring on the middle finger of their right hand. So here's a fun fact. At the beginning of this year, I was in a weekly live singing competition at our local Hamburger Mary's. We were told that one of the challenges was to rewrite the lyrics of a song to be completely our own, and I went ahead and completely rewrote Bang Bang by Jesse J, Ariana Grande, and Nicki Minaj. I changed it, in fact, to Bake Bake, and it was going to be a completely asexual song about baking cake and general ace culture. It was utterly ridiculous and kind of amazing, but very silly. But alas, I never got to perform it because COVID-19 unfortunately prevented me from returning to finish out my final performances in the competition. But if this video gets, I don't know, 1,000 likes, <laughs> I will record a music video for Bake Bake. And yes, if somehow we reach that very lofty goal for how small my channel is right now, I will deeply regret having promised this because I'm actually terrified of singing for people and I only entered that competition in the first place to try to conquer that horrible fear. But I am a woman of my word <laughs> and I will Stick to it, so get to liking. The Spectrum. So here's my hot take, the Kinsey scale is crap. Bold claim, I know, but hear me out. As with all other orientations, asexuality is an extremely nuanced spectrum. Some asexuals are also aromantic, meaning they are not sexually or romantically attracted to any gender, but what about all of the asexuals who do experience different kinds of attraction? If, for example, someone wanted a romantic relationship with another person but weren't sexually attracted to them, they would be referred to as a romantic ace. Further identifiers like homoromantic or heteroromantic, etc., could also be added in order to be more specific about your romantic preferences. The Kinsey scale lacks all of this nuance. On a scale of zero being completely heterosexual and six being completely homosexual without even getting into non-binary genders, where, pray, do the asexuals fall? Well, it turns out the Kinsey scale does try to account for aces, but does so by just putting asexuals as an X off to the side of the scale as a totally removed one-size-fits-all label, and that's just not how human orientations work. In fact, many asexuals will define their orientations by whether or not they experience four common types of attraction, sexual, romantic, sensual, and aesthetic. And honestly, I think even allo people could benefit from broadening their own spectrums in this way. And to take it even a step further, it is quite common for asexuals to also define their attitudes toward sex. There are some asexuals who do have sex for whatever their own personal reasons are. Our scale of attitudes towards sex ranges from sex repulsed or sex averse to sex neutral, with some aces even going so far as to identify as sex positive aces. And then there are demisexual people who may ultimately develop sexual attraction, but a strong emotional bond with a person is a prerequisite in order for this to occur. And there are those who identify as gray ace because even with all of these detailed scales at play, there are still people who find themselves in a gray area, and that is absolutely okay. My experience. So what is my experience as an asexual? Well, as I mentioned, I am happily married. Royce, my spouse, is also asexual. We have 
a modern fairy tale of a story about how we met, but that is perhaps a story for another time. More to the point, people never seem to know what to make of a married asexual. Sex is so heavily associated with relationships that many allosexual people just cannot seem to fathom a relationship, let alone a marriage, between asexuals working. Even though Royce and I both fall in slightly different places on the ace spectrum, we are naturally extremely compatible. And yes, our marriage is romantic, but sex does not need to be an important part of a loving relationship. I can't tell you how many people just assume that we're basically just roommates who maybe got married for tax benefits be or because we're really just afraid of being alone or for no good reason at all, but no, we are not just roommates. We are not just friends. We are in love and we are happily married and nobody should take us less seriously as a married couple just because we're asexual. I probably don't even need to tell you how difficult it can be to date as an asexual woman who personally leans a little towards sex repulsion because honestly, well, just use your imaginations. So when meeting Royce, I was both immensely relieved, but it also just became the greatest thing that has ever happened to me. And I think we're pretty neat. We didn't have a wedding, so the only professional photos we've ever had done are these lovely vampire portraits by famed horror photographer Joshua Hoffine. Photos from the set of that shoot were actually included in a pop sugar listicle about vampires, and we were dubbed the power couple. Admittedly, we do make an awfully good team. Allow me to present evidence as to why we are, in fact, a power couple. A couple of years ago, when I discovered that Japanese online crane games are a thing, I found a machine that had axolotl plushies. Royce, being an amazingly supportive spouse, played a super ad spammy game for like an entire week in order to accumulate enough free tokens to play the machine until I won. So if that's not ace couple goals, I don't know what is. I was actually already married before I came out to my family about being asexual. I honestly didn't even think that I would need to ever come out to them because I just didn't think that it would be relevant, but boy, was I wrong. So remember when I said that the Bojack Axolotl sex farce was extremely relatable? Well, there came a time where I really just kind of had to say something. My grandmother in particular, of all people, was, shall we say, a very confident woman. And even when I was much younger, she would make sexy little comments about men she found attractive. But as I got older, they got increasingly more uncomfortable. And especially after I got married, there was sort of an implied participation that I should have in some of those situations that I just wasn't wired to do. So I quite literally visited my hometown in order to take my grandma to get tipsy on sangria so I could come out to her as ace. She was confused at first and it took an awful lot of explaining, but eventually she was very supportive. She even said to me during that conversation that she would have better understood if I had come out as gay because it turns out my grandmother herself was so allonormative in her thinking that, hey, as long as I was sexually attracted to someone, it would make sense to her. But she loves me and she really loves Royce. So she ultimately decided that this must be the secret reason why we're so perfect together. And also that her life would have been easier if she could have been asexual. Which of course is not necessarily true, but if confusion and misunderstanding is the most common reaction I get, then I wish I was asexual because it seems simpler is right underneath. Ace hate. 
Asexuality is so often erased in our society that even generally well-meaning people don't always realize just how big of a problem ace discrimination can be. But when it comes to prejudice, we know that just because you don't see it doesn't mean that it does not exist. I recently, for example, came across a Facebook bio that I kid you not just said, I have a deep-seated hatred for asexuals. And this was a member of the LGBT community. And this is only one small personal example. Many LGBT spaces are wonderfully inclusive of aces, but there are definitely some LGBT spaces where we are made to feel less than welcome. And of course, we get a lot of outside hate from straight people too. There are actually targeted hate groups lately that have been most rampant on Twitter from what I've seen, who lure aces into falsely titled asexual support groups only to then berate and harass us, including, but not limited, to telling us to burn in hell. Asexual individuals have also been subject of harassment, violence, even murder, but asexuality is not a protected group under hate crime or anti-discrimination laws, so it's rarely reported appropriately for what it is. Is. And then, of course, there are even highly antiquated laws on the books in many places that basically say that a marriage can't be legally binding unless you have sex. <laughs> ah, yes, the age-old marriage consummation laws. Education matters. Representation matters. And inclusion matters. When sex positivity becomes harmful, now please do not get me wrong. Overall, I think sex positivity is a good thing, but even in sex positive spaces, there are often phrases that are thrown around that are inadvertently or otherwise ace exclusionary and erasive. Erasive? Does that work? What an odd word. I really wanted to say erasure, but my sentence wasn't structured to use that word right. Some of the phrases I've seen floating around in those communities are Sex is what makes us human. Everyone has sex. We all masturbate. Everybody watches porn. Sex is an important part of every healthy relationship. These statements are just factually incorrect and can be alienating to many asexuals. Paired with the widespread misconceptions about who we are and the targeted ace hate that we do receive, these kinds of statements can be harmful in their own right. I am absolutely not saying don't celebrate sex if it is an important part of your life, but I am asking you to be careful and inclusive with your language by refraining from blanket statements that do not apply to everyone. How to be an ally. If you made it this far in the video, then you're already doing a huge thing by showing up and learning about the ACE community. Education is the single greatest weapon against ignorance and hate, so please share this video to spread awareness. As I stated at the top of this video, ACE Week is about to begin, so please consider sharing resources and engaging with our community to help us celebrate. I will put some additional resources down in the description for you to explore. And of course, speaking up when you see something wrong is the best thing that any ally can do. So whether you see these harmful misconceptions that I mentioned or ace exclusionary language or even downright hate, please help us to stand up against it. I want to give a huge thank you to my supporters on Patreon. We'll be back to our regularly scheduled hair shenanigans next week. But the fact that you all believe in me as a disabled, asexual weirdo really means the world to me. But wait, before you leave, little mini rant. Just a couple of years ago, a major publication reached out to me asking to interview me about my experience as an asexual. I talked to them for nearly an hour, giving them nuanced information and personal details, 
only to find out that the article was about virgins. They interviewed many virgins and they only used like one tiny quote of mine. <sighs> so clearly we've got a long way to go. But I don't want to leave you on a bad note today, so allow me to briefly take you back before the pandemic when I could freely get my nails done and my amazing nail artist Mao gave me these fantastic pride nails. Ugh, so pretty. I miss them so much. Okay, bye!